Hi, Linda. Sorry I'm late picking you up for Bible study. I'd hate for you to be late your first time visiting my church. Oh, you're fine, Mr. Banks. I'm not quite ready anyway. So what did you say the name of your church was again? It's called the Undying Mercies, Love Unconditional, Cathedral of Neverending Grace. Wow. What a name. That's a whole lot of grace at your church, Mr. Banks. Amen. Just like the Bible says God has a lot of grace for us. Our pastor is big on us, and our visitors knowing that no matter what we do, God has forgiven it all unconditionally. Our motto is, if you can commit it, God can forgive it. That's really cool, Mr. Banks. It is true, that as long as we do not do the unpardonable sin, and as long as we sincerely repent in our heart, our sins are as good as forgiven. Glory be to God. Excuse me? I'm not following you. Unforgivable sin? That's an oxymoron. And what was that our word you said again? Really pins? I don't know what you're talking about, Linda. All I know, is that no matter what I do, I have a forgiving father who is willing to forgive it all. God is too loving to send his beloved children to an eternity in hell. He is not an evil God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The R word I was using, Mr. Banks, is repent. Repentance means that, when God convicts you of sin, you are to agree with him that it was wrong, feel remorse and regret for hurting him, or others that you sinned against, confess that sin to him, and then you are to turn from it, no matter what it takes. That is what true repentance and confession is. Even if you slip back into it, you are to keep turning from it, and ask God for help to do it. Thank God for giving us a second, third, fourth, and fifth chance. Up, uh, Linda. We don't teach that kind of stuff at our church. Don't you know that God's love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness is unconditional? That means that, no matter what we do, say, feel, or think, we are resting in a state of unconditional forgiveness. Hence the church name, Undying Mercy's Love Unconditional Cathedral of Neverending Grace. But, Mr. Banks, don't you feel it is imperative for us to repent and turn from our wicked ways? Why, no. Not at all, Linda. That's silly. That would be like trying to earn your salvation. When you are in a state of grace, you can do as you please. Why just the other day, I stole ten dollars from my boss's purse, and I felt no guilt, and no need to confess, or return the money, because I'm covered by grace. And just this morning, I brought my new camcorder to the movie theater, and recorded that new movie, that just came out, so that I can bootleg several copies, and make some extra money. Hallelujah. Grace covered me. Thank God for his grace. Mr. Banks. You are sadly mistaken. Grace is not a blue-eyed blonde. You are never to use God's grace as a license to sin. Grace is to help you not to sin, not to help you to sin. You need to return that money, and repent for that sin or else I will have to notify your supervisor. And it is against the law to duplicate and sell movies that you did not produce. What is your problem, Mr. Banks? I thought you were a Christian? Oh, Linda. Calm down. There's no need for that. The Bible tells us that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Baby, Jesus did not come to send you to hell. If he did, he wouldn't be as loving as he said he is. There is therefore now no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. So why are you judging and condemning me? Mr. Banks. You have got to be kidding me. There's no way you think that you can steal from people and not confess or repent and still be in right standing with God. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you see Mr. Banks that you first must confess your sins in order to be forgiven for them. You are deceived. And you did not read the entire verse for Romans 8, 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So as you can see, if you walk in the flesh you can be condemned, but if you walk in the Spirit, you cannot be condemned. Linda, shut up talking to me. 
You don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Banks. In Christ Jesus, you are made free from sin and should not continue any more therein. You have to obey God and Jesus' commands. I uh, know I do not. I do not have to do anything but stay up under grace. You are self-righteous and think that your good works will save you. You are a modern-day Pharisee. I don't have to do anything. Whenever I want to do a sin, I just say, grace got me covered. You should do that too. God will not dare punish me. He loves me too much. Just like my parents when I was little. No matter how many kids I bullied. No matter how many cars I hijacked, and no matter how many fights I got in, my loving parents never punished me. Never. Not a single spanking. Wow. Well that explains everything. Mr. Banks. You are a spoiled brat who doesn't understand the importance of discipline and punishment. Well, Ms. Missy, I'm sorry if your parents beat you, but unlike your evil parents, God will not punish us. God is too loving to send us to hell. Don't you understand that it would be wrong for God to punish sin? You are a mess with yourself. Mr. Banks. God is love, but he is also a righteous judge. If someone killed your child and had no regrets and didn't care about your pain and never said I'm sorry and never asked for forgiveness or mercy, how would you feel if that judge never sentenced that person to prison? You would say that judge was wicked and unfair for letting that murderer off the hook with absolutely no jail time. But a righteous judge will sentence that person to a suitable punishment. God is the same way. He loves us more than we can know, but the judge side of God still punishes sin. You must repent and turn from sin, and a just God must punish sin that has not been confessed or repented of. I don't think it's a good idea for me to go to Bible study with you. You are being taught a half gospel that is easy to swallow. But how many of your church would swallow the gospel message with its standards and demands for holiness and obedience? Your church cannot just preach one aspect of God. They need to preach the whole thing. He is a loving father, but he is also a fair judge. He does expect you to repent of your sins and turn from your wicked ways. 1 John chapter 1 verse 6 says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And 1 John chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 say, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You are acting the way you do because ye out do not know Christ, and because you are walking in darkness. Let me show you the door, 